Welcome to New Life Live with host and founder of New Life Ministries, Stephen Arterburn. New Life Live is dedicated to transforming lives one at a time, thanks to the giving hearts of you, our listeners. Our goal is to provide you with wisdom from God's Word to give you hope and help in life's hardest places. If you have a question you'd like to ask today, our phone lines are open. Call 1-800-229-3000. That number again is 1-800-229-3000. Now here's Steve. Hi there, and welcome to New Life Live. Glad you're with us here today. Joining me today, Dr. Alice Benton. Hello, Alice. Hi, Steve. Hi, everybody. Alice and I were just chatting about the weekend that we just experienced, our Finding Freedom weekend. Alice, uh, every day this week I've been asking people to comment about it. What, what do you think? What's, uh, what's, what are you thinking from the weekend or something you remember? Well, at the very beginning of the weekend, I get to just randomly go through the room and meet all the new folks that are coming in. And so often they say, um, I'm scared, I'm lonely, and I'm really uncomfortable being here. Yeah. And then through the process of the relationships they build, the information that they receive and start putting into practice in the groups, they leave with, um, with a, a brotherhood and a sisterhood and people they've connected with at a deeper level, shared things they maybe didn't even think they were going to share mm -hmm. over the weekend. They feel yeah. known and seen and loved. And it's God working through people and grace just spreads like wildfire through that weekend. Yeah, I, th I think it's true. And, uh, you know, I shared with everybody, the guy that said, I'll never, I was, I came, I wasn't going to share anything. I knew I'd be taking things to my grave. And, you know, he said after this one guy shared, uh, I said stuff, to, I told things that I had never shared or told to anybody. And that's really just the kind of the way this thing goes um, when it goes well. And I hope and pray that if you ever have a chance to be part of one of these, you'll call us 1-800-NEW-LIFE and uh, just come and join us at Finding Freedom or our Marriage Intensive because we do believe that all of this stuff uh, is going to go away eventually, and we'll be doing things the way we used to do them in short order. Um, but, you know, we'll go through some struggle and strain in the meantime. And, of course, as we all know, struggle and strain, although not comfortable, it's really good for us to go through it. God uses it to transform us, and that's what we're praying for for you. Our phone number here, 1-800-229-3000, 1-800-229-3000. Uh, I'll just mention that Alice recently did a video called Dealing with Shame, and uh, shame on top of fear, on top of um, whatever, it can really be a struggle. This video that you did, tell us about what you say shame can do to us. Well, I, I'd add that it's usually on top of isolation, and that mm -hmm. mixture is so potent, and it keeps us hiding. When the reality is, if we take the risk, like people do over this weekend or right here on the phone with us on the radio show, when we take the risk to reveal what we're ashamed of, we find that so many people can relate to us, and then God can rush right in with help, whether it's the confession and the forgiveness or a solution to the problem, or again, just being known and heard and seen in, in what we're dealing with. And that really strips the shame away. We actually start to feel like we belong once we're willing to share it with other safe people. It's an incredible transformation process. It's simple, but it certainly isn't easy to do, but we, we can help. We love helping with that. And anybody can get help. Whatever it is, shame, you name it, we want to help you with it. And we'll do that if you'll just call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Right now, if you want help on the radio, it's 1-800-229-3000. Pretty simple. Could be the, the phone call that changes everything for you. 1-800-229-3000. We'll take a break. We'll come right back for more of New Life Live. Alice Benton here, Steve Arterburn. And hope that we can give you some hope, healing, and help right here in the midst of whatever you're going through. 
for years, all I did was focus on my husband and my needs were unmet because of his sexual addiction. The counselors focused on him and all the books I read were about him and how to help him. My name is Shelly Martinkus and I want to personally invite you to the Restore Workshop. If you have been affected by betrayal, it might be that your husband has been looking at pornography, it might be an emotional, a physical affair. I would love for you to come join us. This weekend gives me permission to now focus on me. You will leave with hope, with a community of sisters ready to support you, and you will also leave with tools to move you forward on this journey. I am so thankful to New Life for giving me what I know now is going to be a new life. The Restore Workshop is coming to Dallas June 26th through the 28th. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE to find out more. That's 1-800-639-5433 or online at newlife.com. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. We're back. Steve Arderman here, 1-800-229-3000. 1-800-229-3000. Now, you can join us right now, Facebook Live. We're there, live. You can see what we're doing. Uh, we'll be there and here for two hours. Then um, Jill Hubbard's going to come in, and at 3 p.m. Pacific time, 6 p.m. here in Indianapolis or Eastern time, we're going to do another FaceTime uh, live broadcast, and uh, you could join us for that. And it's a Q&A time. Uh, you, if you have a question, you could actually give us a question before the broadcast. And uh, you could do that by going to this uh, or just emailing those in to stevesocial at newlife.com. So 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. Facebook Live, Q&A, Jill Hubbard, myself. I've got some things I want to present also. And uh, stevesocial at newlife.com is the place uh, where you could uh, put in a question and we'll answer it for you. Right now, we're going to go to our phones, 1-800-229-3000. We'll talk to Margo from Tampa, Florida first. Hello, Margo. How are you today? Hi. Thank you for taking my call. I appreciate you guys so much. You are welcome. What is going on in your life today? Yeah, so I have a question ready, but I want to give you some context first. I'll be short. Um, I'm calling about my sister. Um, she's kind of, and I'm just using these words, kind of seems to be self-obsessed, hypersensitive to any criticism or difference of opinion. Her highest value is self-care. Um, she's always defending that self-care. And um, basically, if anyone contradicts what she thinks is the best thing, she will, you know, it'll be a three, four-hour conversation where you have to talk through it. Um, she recently changed her dietary needs um, to be vegan, and now up the Christmas Everyone had to be vegan, and if they had meat in the house, she was just crying. And it's just we as a family, my question is, um, what can we do as a family and as a Christian family? And are what we do, are, are we enabling her by kind of giving her, giving in to all of her needs and demands that she calls self-care, which she calls biblical? And what is a healthy response? Because over the years, it's escalated, and it's gotten to the point where, I have a couple of other family members who listen to New Life Live, and they're like, uh, Margo, like, you should call in. Like, maybe maybe we're enabling her. And so I just wanted to see what you guys thought about that. Well, let me ask you this. Um, from what you know about her history and all, why would she be this way? I know that's a dramatic question, but, you know, a lot of times it's obvious why somebody uh, out of all the, the kids turn out in a certain way way and do things that are different and strange and if you had to say that or answer that question about her is there something from her past that yeah it just makes sense that this would be kind of strange for her um no 100 percent. i'm actually uh i'm a graduate starting graduate school as a therapist and i've worked in the mental health field and she, i've encouraged her over and over um she has been diagnosed with borderline personality disorder and bipolar over the years, not and she's never followed through. Um, she likes the mania. She likes having that that energy to change the world. And 
Um, she really yeah, feels but, like what she's doing is right. But my question is, why? What happened in her childhood that's oh. different than what happened in your childhood that would make you say, well, you know, of course, no wonder she's going through all this. Look, look at what happened to her. Look at how her life was. Is there anything like that? Yeah, I think she had some, I think she had uh, family dynamics wise. Um, she was the oldest and she was kind of left out. Um, my father was a closet alcoholic and he came out a couple years later. So that was traumatic. And she did go through a period of sexual kind of exploration um, that was pretty traumatic, I think, for her. She was never taken advantage of, but she kind of was up and down. So I, I think with a, with a lack of, you know, um, healthy attachments growing up, she was always left out from – she was made fun of and left out of, like, the family okay. dynamic because she was so different. Okay. So has anybody ever suggested she – get any help for that yeah constantly like i'm always like hey you should see a therapist and she she saw a therapist a couple months ago for a little bit and then she saw one she's seeing one now i think so i think it's like we can't really control what she's gonna do but my question is as a family what yeah. are are we enabling her by going it's kind of hard to explain but here's a really yeah. simple example really quick example i posted a picture of <laughs> an iguana on my Instagram, okay? Yeah. But the iguana, ha the iguana had died, but it did not look dead, right? And it just looked like, wow, an iguana's in Florida. This is amazing. So I posted on Instagram. I get a text from her three hours later. I cannot believe you would do that. Or, did you not think about me? Well, she doesn't like anything violent. She's a vegan. She hates death. She thinks that the world is going to be perfect. She's living in, like, the clouds. So she was mad at me for posting on a public forum, not to her specifically, of posting an iguana and so it's that that kind of thing happens all the time and what i end up finding is the family ends up going oh i'm sorry where part of me goes is are we enabling her you know okay alice what do you think so how could we help margo here well margo first i wonder how intertwined are your lives logistically do you live near one another do you see each other often <laughs> thankfully i recently moved back to florida but there when we <laughs> To answer your question, when we are close to each other, it's constant demand from her to hang out and do stuff. But right now, we are. Um, she's in California, so we're far away from now. But she texts me every day. Okay. This is tough. It's hard to know how to love her well because she's so demanding yes. and she's very sensitive and she takes a lot of things personally. Very sensitive. Mm-hmm. So a, a, a Bible verse comes to mind. This is from 1 Corinthians 8, where it tells us that we should be careful because as Christians, we have a lot of freedom, but we don't want our freedom to become a stumbling block to other people that are more sensitive or have more heightened fears about what might be <laughs> biblical or what might be sin and have sort of a, a narrower view than we do. So I want to take that into account with your sister. And I think that verse applies this way. It's kind of like the picking your battles idea. If there are things that don't mean a whole lot to you that you can sort of give in to her, you can move her direction in order to keep some vestige of relationship with her, the things that don't matter as much to you. I would look mm -hmm. for those chances to empathize, to validate with her and move her way. But it sounds like there are a lot of things that you don't agree on and that you couldn't freely, cheerfully just give in to her desire. And it might actually do her harm to give in to too much that she's asking for. So I would try to That's differentiate. What I'm worried about. Yeah. Yes. So I would try to differentiate her requests in that way. Simple things that don't mean a lot to you, move her way. Others that are more meaningful, I'd stick with empathy and validation. Boy, I hear that really bothers you that I have meat in my refrigerator. But I gotta be honest, I'm a meat eater and it, it's still gonna be there. I don't, I don't need to serve it to you. I can respect you on that level, but but this is a this is a value I hold. This is a way that I live my life. So you can both stick to your values but you can always empathize and validate that that's difficult with her and she disagrees with you. Yeah, I love and what you, you just know, said and I think that's really wise. And, and I think um, just to keep in mind that for your own sanity's sake, the Bible really is so clear about not arguing with um, a foolish person, you know, that it just doesn't really help anything. And so, um, 
you you really you want to show love and compassion, but just don't argue with her over, you know, whether or not it's okay for a a dead animal to be posted, even if it looks alive. All those kinds of things that, you know, those are you're just never gonna talk her out of thinking the way or feeling the way she is and it just really you know that old trite saying never try to teach a pig to sing uh, they don't do very well singing and it's really annoying to them to try uh, to learn how to sing so let's just skip that part so you know there's some wisdom so, like, in, in that oh sorry no go ahead so I was just going to say, can you, so can I get your guys' wise sample of approval, obviously just one perspective, that like, it's okay to, on the big matters, not the little things, but on the matters that matter, it's okay to be loving and empathetic, yet also have the meat in the freezer, don't serve it to her, but my, and then also if she tries to have a three hour long, they're never arguments, there's never, you know, there's never anger, it's always very intellectual and psychological, but Basically, I'm going to have the meat in the freezer. I love you and empathize with you, but I'm going to not have a three-hour conversation because that's what's happening is sometimes I'll stand up to her, but then I'll have to go. Is it worth it because we'll have to go through the three-hour conversation? Mark? No, you don't have to. You can stand up to her, and you don't have to go through a three-hour conversation. You can so at any point. Like, I think we're done talking. I love you. No, and we'll talk you, to no you don't have to say it that way. You can say this. Hey, I, um, I really hear what you're saying and you know a lot of these things are things that you've said to me before but I have a uh, another thing I have to do right now and so uh, maybe we can talk again another time Margo I, I that's have, better I have, than I, I think we're done talking now <laughs> that's you know I, I have two additional no... trap you. she'll say she'll say when's the date you're gonna do that then if you say we'll do it later she'll go okay three o'clock on the 14th like, ah! <laughs> and you say, you know what? I just really can't commit uh, right now to a time, but we'll we'll get to it. And you know, this isn't a life okay. or death situation. And so, yeah, good to talk to you, Alice. You had something else you wanted to add? I do. I have a couple lines. I use these often with my kids when they want to argue a point with me. I might say, "Well, we're just going to okay. agree to disagree." Then we agree to disagree. Or I might say, you know what, I, I love like you. I love you too much to argue about this. So I'm just not willing to keep on arguing. Sometimes okay. I might tell them, I've, I'll, I've get, I'll give you five more minutes for you to tell me whatever you want to about this. I don't agree with you, but I will hear you okay. out on it. But then I will end it at the five minutes, even if they have more to say. I say, all right, I, I've, I've got to step oh, away good. now. I got to step away. Okay. And and with me, I I um, have to say to my wife, you probably are going to win this <laughs> argument because we know you're much smarter than me. Now it doesn't mean you're right, but but just given the fact that your IQ is double mine, you're you'll win it. And but I I just want to make a point. I I could still have a point here or two that might be accurate anyway you just don't want to let your day be consumed with foolish arguments that are going to change yes. no one yeah. other than so draining your... yes okay so so say no yeah yeah so that no really... is really yeah. a, you know to yourself first and then no to her no we're not going to do this again yeah. Okay. And she All might right. Glad threaten that's... and freak out, but that's the right thing. Yeah. Well, that's what people with borderline do. Uh, they either exactly. totally <laughs> discontinue all com, you know, any connection with you, or they punish you, or uh, they threaten that they're going to destroy themselves. Just depending on the severity of their borderlininess. So just she has to go do that if that's what she has to do. Okay. You're so right. Thank you so much. I really appreciate right, you now, guys. Now, I awesome actually Margo. have a little book for you. I have a book that is Ooh. entitled Understanding <laughs> and Loving a Person with Borderline mm -hmm. Personality mm -hmm. Disorder. Good book. Great. Thank you. Just for you. I'll send I it to you. Anybody it. else? Anybody else? Um, I'd be happy, happy to give you that book and uh, nothing worse than ordering it. And then the person you love with Borderline sees you're reading that book. And then they decide to punish you for having ordered that book. But they are great. Borderline. They are punishers. <laughs> it's really e even when they know they're doing it, they can't help themselves. So um, just give them some grace, but protect yourself and say, I just you know, can't 
do this. Can't do this argument anymore. Tony Lexington, Kentucky. Sirius XM is where he hears the program. Tony, are you there? Hey, Stephen Alice. Hi, yep, Tony. I'm here. Hi. Can you guys hear me okay. okay? I'm driving. I apologize. Well, the music has started, so I've got to go to a break. We'll get to you right after this, all right? Okay. Sounds good, Steve. Okay. You are listening to New Life Live. Dr. Alice, Steve Arterburn here. We love you. We care about you. Great, great verse. First John 4, 18. Such love has no fear because perfect love expels all fear. If we're afraid, well, it's because we're afraid of the punishment. And this shows we have not fully experienced God's perfect love. If you think God's punishing you and all of that and you're obsessed over that, hey, maybe there's a little bit of difficulty or struggle in that love relationship with God and you work on that, things can get really good. My wife had found me out through my past and my sexual addiction since I was a small child. It really gave me the opportunity to start digging into my past, start digging into my childhood, figure out what was causing me to feel the way I was feeling. Every Man's Battle will really give you that opportunity because all the guys there in that room are there for the exact same reason you're there. I don't want to be the reason that my kids are going to counseling. I don't want to be the reason that they begin to struggle with the same issues that I'm struggling with and I've got to put an end to this. Yes, you can be different. God does love you. You can be forgiven for this and there's a way out of this. But you have to acknowledge that you have to change and that there's a problem. If you're struggling, call us. There are people on the other end of the line who want to hear from you, who want to help you. We don't want you to hand down something to another generation that just looks like pain and destruction. You can hand down redemption, but you got to take that first step. Just give us a call. It's 1 800 639 5433. It's 1 800 New Life. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. Your ministry has saved my life. If you struggle with emotional hurt, family, or marriage problems, the pit of depression, or the pain of addictions, we can help. I'm down 100 pounds now from what I was. You guys are awesome. You are a blessing to America. <laughs> Our treatment programs provide clinically appropriate solutions from licensed professionals, all in a biblical framework. I have had problems with alcohol. I think God has ordained this place to be His. You don't have to be a prisoner of your pain. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. She tells me that I'm a new man and I feel like a new man. It worked for me and it can work for them too. This time it is different. If you're ready to take the first step toward genuine spiritual and emotional healing, please call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. We'd love to hear from you. If you have a question or a comment, call toll-free 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. We're back. We're talking with Tony. He's been holding the whole time. Don't forget, 3 o'clock Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. We're going to do a little uh, Facebook Live Q&A. And if you'd like to queue... You can send that cue to Steve Social at newlife.com. So glad it isn't Steve Antisocial, because that would really be sad <laughs> in that way. All right, Dr. Jill Hubbard will be joining me for that. But right now, Tony, what in the world is going on with you today, and how could we help you? Hey, guys. Uh, hey, I, I've been uh, listening to your show for a while now, so I, I wanted to make sure I called in on a day that Alice was there, too. Um, just because, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I really need that Christian perspective here. So, um, the rest of us don't you... really, the rest of us don't really have the Christian perspective <laughs> I, 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 like she does. I know, Steve, I, I know. I, and I didn't, yeah. I didn't mean it as a slight to anyone else. Um, hey, I want to say but, this. Um, I think Alice, I think you, you have some perception there because Alice really is a, um, a spiritually motivated, deep spiritual person so I, I appreciate uh, the fact that you can pick up on that all right so what's your question you. and i'll just listen to you guys have a nice conversation <laughs> <laughs> you feel free to chime in steve I, okay um my question is about um the holy spirit listening for the holy spirit's voice versus understanding what's coming from inside you like your own little voice and uh, i don't know if there's 
there's uh, uh, two different viewpoints on that or multiple viewpoints on that, but I'm just wondering, how do you differentiate between the two voices? And Tony, would you give us some like specific your, examples? What are you, where are you trying to discern the Holy Spirit's voice in your life? Well, I, I had this dream, um, and it was, you know, I kind of woke up upset after it. I can't remember a lot of the details of it. Um, so, you know, I, I didn't know it, but I do remember that it was a conversation with the Holy Spirit. So I don't know if it was truly the Holy Spirit or if it was something that I imagined or something that I, what, you know, I, yeah. what did the Holy Spirit so, say to you in the dream in that conversation? Uh, well, I only, like I said, I can't remember a lot of the details of it, but it seemed like it was a heated conversation and that he said he was leaving at the end. And um, kind of, I've been struggling with my faith since then, um, wondering if he's still working in my life or whether I've done something to offend him. Um, but I can't remember the details of it. I'm actually thinking about doing hypnotherapy to try and remember some of the details of the dream. I don't know what your perspective on that is either. Well, wait a second. Are you a believer? I suspect that you are, given all the things you've said, right? I am. Yes, I am. Okay. The Bible says that when we accept Christ, we are filled with the Holy Spirit, right? Right. Where in the Bible does right. it ever say that the Holy Spirit goes away from your life? Uh, I've read some things from some different authors that think, um, that I'm, ta I'm talking about the Bible. Uh, I'm talking about the Bible here. The Bi I, 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 I have to be honest with you, Steve. Although I am a Christian, I don't know the Bible as well okay. as I should. All right. So here's, here's the thing. I, I know you called for Alice, but I'm going to jump in here, and then she can, can help you with this. I really okay. believe that your dream is irrelevant compared to truth of Scripture. And I believe that when we look at Scripture, you could make a case that the hand of God is upon a person or a ministry or something at one time, and that God might, um, you could say, pull that hand away. But okay. that doesn't mean that it's permanent, and it doesn't mean... Um, that we have been abandoned by God. It just might mean that for a time, God is going to work differently in our lives. But when you accept Christ, Christ is part of the Trinity, and you have God, the Creator, Christ who died for you and showed us a great way to live, and the Holy Spirit that both comforts you and empowers you. Now, here's what I would do if I was you. I would... I would live the life that God has called me to live, and then it doesn't matter what that dream was or is. You, Even if you okay. were to hear that, that the Holy Spirit had pulled away from you, rededicate your life to God so that the Holy Spirit pulls back in. See, that's more important than okay. whatever, because dreams are... are weird they're based on a collection of mem memories that are fragmented and some are are based on real life things and then sometimes god speaks to us through them but everything has to be matched up against and for and with scripture now alice when we come back i'm just going to let you take over but i couldn't i just didn't i didn't want you to hang out there thinking that this mystery is going to determine uh, the future of your life. God loves you, Tony. You, you are seeking God. And, you know, the only unpardonable sin is to not accept Christ as Savior. Uh, that's, that's the big one. And you've done that. Right. And, and uh, dream or no dream, you have a God that absolutely is crazy about you and I'm sorry that you don't feel it but a lot of times our feelings and that's the least valid 
information in our relationship with God. We'll be back. For most of my life, I've been dealing with an opiate addiction. Why is opioid addiction quickly becoming one of our nation's biggest killers? Maybe it's because it isn't only those who are addicted who are in denial. We did what I see so many parents do, is it can't be an addiction. There's something medically wrong. It's impossible to solve a problem when you don't know what you're up against, and families will try to find any explanation except the one that will put them on the right path. Alcoholism and drug addiction is a family disease. It doesn't affect just the individual. If someone you love is abusing painkillers, know what you're up against. It's time to admit it's addiction and seek treatment. Call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We have Christ-centered partner treatment centers around the country. Call 1-800-639-5433 or visit us online at newlife.com. We just made a decision. We will do whatever it takes. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. I'm an addict, and I'm trying to get God in my life again. You seem to be able to get to the crux of a problem quickly. Our Christ-centered treatment programs can help you break free to embrace all that God has for you and your family. I just want to thank you guys for bringing me to a relationship with Jesus. There really is help for marital problems, depression, addictions, panic attacks, and feelings of hopelessness. I came back with so many tools to help me prepare myself to fight this struggle and this battle that I have every day. You can start living again today. Living the life God intended for you. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. They did care and they did follow up very lovingly and it made all the difference in my life. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Someone who cares is waiting at the other end of the phone. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Just call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 1-800-639-5433. We're glad you joined us for New Life Live. To be a part of the program, call 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. We're back, Steve Arterburn here, and um, 1-800-229-3000. We've got some lines open, 1-800-229-3000. Now, Tony and Alice. Alice, what do you have to say for Tony? He's concerned about, was this dream actually the Holy Spirit speaking to him saying, I'm I'm finished with you. What do you think? It's certainly a possibility because God does speak to us through our dreams, but I would say that's a rare occurrence. And it's it's worth looking into your own conscience and God prods us through our conscience. So I wonder if something was coming up for you in your dream, perhaps because of an area of unconfessed sin or an area of a bad or unhealthy habit that you haven't quite conquered, or maybe you haven't shared with people in your life. Does any of that fit for you, Tony? Yeah, there, there was, there definitely was. And, and I have sought help with those areas since. Um, so I'm still working on those things. Um, but, um, but yeah, I mean, there, there was, and I, it kind of, you know, I, I think, I don't want to say that. <clears throat> I think that, you know, sometimes we get really lax in our life. Um, and I was in a place where I wasn't, you know, attending church every week. And I wasn't in the word, um, regularly and, uh, you fall into, to those old worldly habits again. So that's, that's kind of where I was. And I don't know if, you know, like you said, maybe the Holy Spirit was there convicting me of those those areas in my life. But um, but like I said, I, you know, I, I just got this feeling that he's not there anymore, and uh, I don't know how to test that. Well, when, when we sense God's absence, it's usually because we have moved away from him or we've disconnected from people because he speaks to us and connects to us through other people so yeah. those two areas you're you're building up again of your faith and your practices of your faith but also like you're doing here with us letting down the wall letting down the the protection protective barrier to be vulnerable with other people that's how we tend to feel god again yeah okay all right so I really again it, guys if you can get out of the worry and into the word and then just do the things that you know honor god you're you're just going to be so much better off than trying to figure out 
you know, what that was. And, and I tell you, you know, if you want to feel the power of God within you, you go help somebody. You reach out to somebody else or you get help for yourself and you watch things happen that you never dreamed could. 1-800-229-3000. That is the phone number. 1-800-229-3000. And uh, Larry Sonnenberg is in the studio. Larry, uh, let's talk about a couple of things. Uh, one is if people need help, we're here. They can call us. And two, we need their help also. Absolutely. And <clears throat> I want to remind them one of the ways we're helping is we are offering our Club New Life library of videos uh, to anybody for between now and the end of April, April 30th. We know that these are tough times and the uncertainty and the challenges and the fear that uh, is out there is real. And I just want folks to know we want to help. So we've opened that up for a month, a little over a month. All you have to do is go to newlife.com and on the home page, right under the big rotating banner, there's you'll see a, a link right there. It's very obvious. Just click on it and you can get to all those videos. There's 360 videos with more being added every week and yeah. on any subject. So uh, first off, I just wanted to know, we want to help you. Um, we do want you to help us also. Um, during these times, you know, I, I told staff this morning uh, here in Lake Forest, I probably have every reason to be panicking if I didn't believe that God's hand is on what's happening and on us, we don't know exactly what things we'll have to cancel. We don't know uh, how much people will give or not give, but I know God's hand is on it. And I just want to reach out to you and say, would you help us? Help us just overcome the uncertainty of the times right now. And you could do that through Club New Life. You can do it through a one-time gift. Any size gift is helpful. And I want to make a special appeal to some of the folks out there. And I know it's probably a minority, but there's folks out there with foundations and the ability to make larger gifts, larger gifts with more zeros on it than I'm able to make. And if we could get a couple of those, that would be helpful. Um, but sure would. We're, we're optimistic that uh, this is a season that we don't all understand and uh, we're going to be okay. But we need your help in the process. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so if God's moving you, um, call us up, 1-800-NEW-LIFE, and say, okay, I'm going to help you and um, help you get through this tough time. And Because we want, we want everybody to, to get a paycheck here and be answering those phones and helping people deal with issues. Maybe there's no other place for them to call. All right, let's go to Mr. Rick. He's calling from Atlanta, Georgia. Sirius XM Satellite Radio. Rick, how are you today, my friend? Um, I'm okay, I guess. Um, my question is, um, I own a small business, uh, three locations in the North Georgia area, and I'm really struggling to make ends meet because of all the problems with the coronavirus pandemic. Yeah. And all my friends keep saying, well, you know, trust God, he'll get you through this. But I do know that many businesses, fail at times like this, and I know many of people are probably Christians. I don't know that, that the guarantee that God's going to make me survive, and I, and I just want to know what somebody else thinks, you know, maybe a biblical answer that, you know, I always hear God's going to provide, but I don't know that that's true, and His will will be done, but I don't know if I believe He's necessarily going to make my business survive. No, I think you're exactly right. You cannot... Uh, presume upon the Lord or assume that because you're a Christian you're protected from business failure um, what what we do have as believers what we want is a guarantee but what we have is a guarantee that he'll never forsake us and no matter what happens he will work it to our good he'll pick us up uh, wherever um, you know we need to be picked up from and we'll move on the other thing is, if we can put our hope and trust in Him, then maybe we can kind of wash our brain of some um, worry and struggle and better be able to focus on the challenge that's ahead for us uh, to overcome the things that we're struggling with. Alice, what are you thinking? I mean, I, I wish that there was 
a guarantee, but there isn't. What are you thinking about this? It's tough to swallow, and you're right, Rick, that there's there's more really a guarantee in the Bible that we will struggle and we yeah. will have trouble in this world. But I think God directs us to do a few very specific things. First, he tells us to be grateful purposefully and to look for gratitude, especially when we're going through the hard times. It's a tough ask, but it does change our brain chemistry and it adjusts our attitude and it protects us against anxiety. Then he asks mm -hmm. us to make really specific requests of him, whether it's a bill that's going to be tough to pay. He wants us to lay that bill before him in prayer and ask for the help. But again, there's not the guarantee that the help will come as we want it to. He tells us to ask for wisdom of how to manage these situations, but also to reach out to other people, whether it's for um, business advice or for support or encouragement, that um, all those things are ingredients in God's plan to help us get through the inevitable struggle. I, I don't know okay, that we help you. calm your, your fear any about, um, you know, whether or not your business is going to a survive but just do what you can to get through this time because you know on the other side of this things are going to get back to to normal again uh, and if you can just somehow get help yeah go ahead i know that's true it's just um depending on the length of time it may be impossible to make make all my bills and if i can't get some people to work with me then it may be difficult i don't know it just it is very anxious time and i already struggle with anxiety to begin with so it doesn't make it any better okay so let me um a lot of times rick a guy like you you're out there you're trying to succeed um that uh, kind of produces an independent spirit and then it's kind of uncomfortable to be around people are you involved in any groups yet now that you're in this new place well, I mean, um, I, I'm at a new church, so I haven't been to done small groups with him yet. I've done them plenty of times in the past, but right now our church isn't meeting. So. Yeah, but just if you could uh, get with uh, other men, you know, uh, see if they're doing a, if their Bible study is uh, like a Zoom meeting or even a conference call, and just try to connect in the midst of all this. Yeah, yeah, Alice, what are you thinking? And Rick, let us connect with you with one of our network counselors. It's amazing what even a handful of sessions can do when you're able to just pour out all those worries that have been on your mind. It can really clear things up for you, even though the circumstances don't change, but it's the support that can bolster you and, and help you keep moving. Okay, hold on. We're going to try to get some really good help for you. We'll be back after this. My wife asked me for the first time in 2011 if I would consider myself a sex addict, so I signed up. You know, I'd read the Every Man's Battle book, and it was a great book, but the workshop, it was the experience that really was key for me. If, if they go to EMB, they're going to be in good hands. You know, this is a safe place. They're going to be surrounded by men that simply walk the talk. The weekend leaders that they will go through this workshop with, they'll help them to get to the root of their issues. You know, I've been through a number of well-preached sermons listened to and read countless books, uh, been to a number of seminars, but EMB for me was, it was a game changer. It truly saved my life. Being in this community, being in this workshop, being around these men will change them if they'll let them. You're going to encounter men that will meet you where you're at, and you will instantly walk into a safe place where they're welcome. If you're struggling, call us. We don't want you to go on struggling. Just give us a call. It's 1-800-639-5433. It's 1-800-NEW-LIFE. I was really living a very anxiety-filled life. I turned on New Life, and the topic that day was about anxiety. And just by listening, I got relief. You can help New Life Live stay on the air by joining Club New Life today. When you sign up to support us monthly through Club New Life, we'll send you the Transformation Welcome Gift, which includes a personal-sized life recovery Bible, a life recovery journal, and five life recovery workbooks. Plus, there are ongoing benefits, like access to the Club New Life video library, the monthly Club New Life CD or download, 
quarterly resources, free shipping on purchased resources, and discounts on workshops. I did go to Take Your Life Back. That's been immensely helpful to me. That's why I continue to support the ministry with the hope that it not only am I helping my own situation, that I'm helping others as well. Support Club New Life, and together we can help hurting people find help and hope in life's hardest places. Call 1-800-639-5433 to join Club New Life today. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. We're back, Steve Arterburn here. The world is changing. There are so, so many, many things that uh, we struggle with. And, um, you know, it's important, very, very important that we stay close, <coughs> excuse me, stay close to God in all that we're doing right now. How about we, um, how about we talk with Joanne? Joanne, you're on with Alice and Steve. Hello, thank you for taking my call. Um, I, my question, I'm going to start out with a question and then I'll kind of tell you all. Um, uh, my um, son is 36 and I, I, my approach, I want to know if I'm doing the right thing. Um, he's been calling me like about 15 times a day, literally, because he's having some, uh, besides the mental issues that he has, he is having some um, medical problems. Um, where he told me he's having his ring in his ears, his, he has high blood pressure, um, hepatitis C, um, and he's afraid he has an aneurysm, he has pain in his head. Um, I, I called and spoke with the, the nurses um, at the, you know, their medical staff that they have in the jail. And oh, your exactly son's in jail. Helpful. Yes, your son's in jail. In jail. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. All right. Yes, sorry. Okay. Um, and um, when he um, went through um, a lot of emotionally abusive stuff with him for many, many years, and um, he um, he is a believer, and he'll he'll do okay, and he means well. But nothing ever lasts. Like he won't end up being able to go to a church for very long and has some issues. Or um, well, why, why is he in jail? Different. First of all, well, what's he doing in jail? Oh, okay. What? Okay. So he's in jail because, and this is the second time this has happened. He wasn't put in jail the first time. He thought that people were trying to break into the place where he was living, and mm -hmm. so he actually uh, bought a gun and for um, protection and. Mm -hmm. uh, Anyway, he uh, shot inside the house thinking people were breaking in. I don't think anybody really was, but he thinks that they were. And, um, it, you know, it went through the window or whatever and into a neighbor's house. And thank God no one was hurt. But, um, you know. It, okay, it, so it, is I, he I, under I, the care of a psychiatrist? No. Um, he, well, he has been on and off. He's been in and out of different psychiatric, um, you know, institutions here in our town. And um, but then when they let him back out on the street, you know, like if they have medication for him, uh, well, well, they always have medication, but he's not allowed to take it if he's at a halfway house. They don't ever allow them to take the medication. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't last very long, even with a halfway house. Okay. And, All right. Um, so Al let, really let's ask Alice what she's mm -hmm. thinking when she hears about your situation, which is really, okay. really troubling to hear all that he's having to go mm -hmm. through. Well, Joanne, your heart must be so heavy, and it's very mm -hmm. difficult to know how to care for your son well, but also protect yourself at the same time because he has been abusive in the past, and he sounds like he takes advantage of your time and your attention, your listening ear. Did I hear you yeah. right that he calls yeah. 15 times a day? Yeah, he's, he's calling because he wants me to... Um, to intercede um, for you, him. He has, yeah, yeah, he wants me to bond him out because, and take him to the hospital. And that is where I have a lot of guilt and fear about that. But um, I know that what I was saying to him yesterday, I said, if if they, um, what if they, you know, say, okay, here's some medicine for this, and then they put you out on the street, 
And then what? You're going to be homeless, and it's going to start the whole thing all over again. Yeah, he's probably actually in a very good place for him right now. And mm -hmm. um, so, but the problem is you're answering the phone 15 times a day. Well, I'm ignoring it. Um, sometimes I'll ignore yeah. it for up to two weeks and not even answer it at all. I just, you know, I have all these missed calls. But every time I see it's him, it's like I feel like I could just bust up crying. You know, it just yeah. it keeps me So upset. here's what I would do. I would say to him, if you want me to help you, um, I would love to set aside time Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 3 p.m. or whatever. And that's the only time I want. Your son to try to get him out of jail early. In fact, his completion of his sentence might lead to him being mandated for psychiatric treatment. That would be my hope, and that's what you could possibly advocate for. But I think getting him out of, of jail early would not serve anyone. I think it would put you and him and other people around him in danger. And my hope is that you're regularly connecting either with a therapist or with some female friends that understand you and that hold you to good self-care. Because of course you feel guilty and you love your son and you, you get pulled back into answering probably more times than you really want to. And you, you feel like you might have to bond him out. And I think you need a regular sounding board of women that will pull you back into considering what's best for you, your son, and the people around him. And, and right now, I think it is good, healthy distance from him, not taking more calls than you're willing to take from him. And, yeah. and the next thing yeah. is that he, he simply must get involved with whatever uh, the prison or the jail has to offer. If it's a prison fellowship group, it's meeting with the chaplain. Uh, you, you can have some criteria for him. If he wants your help, here's the least that you can do while you're incarcerated that might produce the best outcome possible. We are just about out of time. I want to remind you that at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific, Dr. Jill Hubbard and I will be on Facebook Live. Alice and I will be on Facebook Live in another minute. We're on there right now and we're recording another program, but when we record programs, we're on Facebook Live during that recording and so you could watch that you could call us at 1-800-229-3000 and uh, i was uh, just reading uh, with our folks today one of the the great books ever written by a wonderful priest thomas akempis and he wrote the imitation of christ and and he said this uh you know with without the way you know there is no uh, going and and without the truth there is no knowing and without the life there is no living in other words it's all about jesus who said i am the way and the truth and the life well that's what we want to do during these tough times is make christ the way and the truth and the life when we as rational people have a struggle doing that we get help. You call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We need you to step up and help us during this time if you can. It's a tough time for us. It's going to be tougher. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. But we have so many great things for you. You just call us. But join us right now, 1-800-229-3000. We hope this program has helped you by giving you insights for handling the challenges you face in your life. We want you to know that we're here for you. 
but you also need to know that New Life Live is a listener-supported ministry. To make your donation or to get any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or write to us at New Life Ministries, P.O. Box 1029, Lake Forest, California, 92609. Please join us again tomorrow for New Life Live. Hi, Steve Artemir here. Thanks for watching New Life Live on our New Life YouTube channel. You know, you can see it anytime. Hope you'll subscribe. And when you do, hope you'll turn that little button thing on the bell so that whenever we post a new video, it'll ring right through. Now, if you go to newlife.com, you'll see the schedule of when we're in the studio, which is helpful to know if you have a question for the program. Or you could go to newlife.com or call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. You could do this on the app. I mean, there's so many ways that you can stay in touch with us and know when we're there because we want to answer your questions. So thanks for watching right here on the New Life YouTube channel, and we'll see you next time. Click here to subscribe.